Hey guys, Quiv the Lazy Geek here and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to do a quick video as an update for my batter filters because I finally received my replacement for the Oxygen 3 filter that was really terrible for uh, even super fast telescopes with very high apertures. And uh, I'm happy to report that this filter, I measured it in a spectrometer, its peak Ideally for my hyperstar at f2 should be at around uh, 502.5 nanometers and The peak I measured via spectrometer is exactly 502.5 nanometers within the error margin of my spectrometer So this is great. It means I received a good filter But that's not everything that's been happening because you'll see that this filter has f2 specified in there on the um, on the box whereas um, earlier samples of those ultra high speed filters would be like a range between f2 and f3.5 and now it's different and this is because uh, batter has changed the way that uh, they sell those filters in a way they bin them now so that you have filters that are more appropriate for f2 type of imaging filters that are more appropriate for f3 types of imaging and filters that are more, more appropriate for slower focal ratios and they also provide on their website an amazing little uh, tool to actually choose what the right filter for you is um, with that even includes things like the uh, bandpass shift that is triggered by low temperatures for instance or just like temperature changes now that shift is not huge but it is there and it's really impressive that batter uh, takes it into account uh, now, I haven't been able to test this filter under the stars uh, yet. You can see the weather is not great and um, I was hospitalized for a while for uh, back surgery uh, when finally the, the skies were clear. So, uh, not there yet, but uh, we'll get there at some point. Let's anyway have a quick look at uh, Batter's website. Okay, and I am now on Batter's website. So, if we look, uh, I'm on their filters page. And if we look now, let's have a look at our ultra narrowband high speed filters here. And uh, it's written new and there's a good reason for that. And I'm personally quite impressed by all the effort that they've been through to really uh, help correct uh, all of the issues that we've been having around their ultra high speed filters. And at least for my little sample that I received, it seems to have fixed the issue uh, via basically binning and uh, of the uh, of the filters. Now, how does this uh, all work? If you go on their web page, you can see that you have a batter narrowband high speed filter selector page that is um, available. And so I'm going to click on that and we're going to have a look. Okay, now this page is quite interesting because you can see that you can choose three parameters which filter wavelengths you're interested in. So here I am going to choose uh, oxygen 3. You can choose which is your average working temperature, which indeed does have a small uh, bandpass shift effect on filters. Uh, so for me, it's more, more often uh, higher than 10 degrees Celsius than lower than 10 degrees Celsius. And then I'm going to uh, select my FWHM, what I desire, which is going to be for me the 3.5 nanometer, 4 na nanometer, because I'm in a very light polluted area. And I really am thinking about a single telescope, which is my uh, Hyperstar C6 telescope, which has a huge central obstruction and a very fast focal ratio. Of, um, of f2 and uh, that means that I can get by with a filter that's basically that I will use only on that telescope uh, whereas if I wanted to use that filter with more telescopes I'd be better off with something like a 6.5 nanometer filter but since I'm in Tokyo in a very light polluted area overall it's better to have like uh, filters that are narrower to have better signal to noise ratio uh, after a certain time of exposure of integration okay so now we can see this is the graph that is very interesting to me, like batter, oxygen, three, four nanometers, where you can see some samples of, uh, of telescopes and you have the central obstruction in percentage of diameter on the left, and then you have the focal ratio on uh, the um, x-axis. Y-axis is percentage of obstruction by diameter. X-axis is the focal ratio. For me, my Hyperstar C6 is actually very close to that uh, Raza 8 here. And you can see that for me, using the, um, the color explanation here on the right, the F2 filter is perfect for that particular telescope, which is what I have, which is perfect. And, um, and then like the F3 version of the filter would be great for like the sharp star uh, fast newts. 
uh, for instance. So this really gives us a good idea of what to do about, uh, about those filters. And you can see that even if you have like no central obstruction, so uh, you have a, an f2 lens, um, for, ex for instance, like a, a Sigma f1.8 uh, 135mm lens or a Samyang or Rokinon um, f2 135mm lens, you'd still want, looking at the focal ratio, you'd still want to be like ultra high speed in this case. And this helps you really find the, uh, the, correct, uh, the, the correct filter and then you can click on the one that you want. It, it, I'm really impressed by uh, the fact that Batter went through the effort of bidding their filters more precisely. And if they're bidding their filters more precisely, it likely means that uh, you would not get duds right because if i buy an f2 filter i'm pretty sure they've binned it based on measurements to some extent and uh and that means i wouldn't be getting a filter that really doesn't work for me hopefully uh fingers crossed uh, and this is great now if we also look at the top right of this page we have a blog post and a white paper that are available and in particular i highly recommend reading that white paper um, the uh, blog, po blog, blog post is basically like a, a very simple version of the uh, of the white paper and it explains why we need to to choose a filter for our particular equipment especially if we have a very narrow band pass which is what we're looking at obviously i've covered um, a lot of those considerations uh, in previous videos but if you're new to the channel you really want to check this page it's very well explained and uh, the uh, the white paper itself what i really like is that for example here i'm looking within the white paper at the oxygen 3 ideal um, band pass diagram and we can see it for like a normal filter at the top for an f3 optimized filter in the middle and an f2 optimized filter at the bottom we can see for this f2 optimized filter like the the tip of it should be at around 502.5 which is exactly what i measured on this for my spectrometer with my spectrometer which is perfect of course i cannot judge anything on star halos that kind of stuff that to me star halos are not super they don't bother me so i'm, I'm different than other people in that respect uh, but at least in terms of band pass now we can really see what is the ideal and if you've bought a, a cheap spectrometer like the uh, the indigo that i presented uh, in previous videos on my channel you'd actually be able to check that uh, you know the filter fulfills the the actual specifications that batter has computed for your uh, specific focal ratio and this is great and this this white paper has like everything for the 6.5 nanometer um, filters for the 4 nanometer and 3.5 nanometers uh, filters and it's it's a great uh, white paper to go through I, I highly recommend it um, and that's really all that I wanted to cover um, in this video this video by the way is not sponsored by batter batter did not even contact me about this they left a comment in one of my previous videos uh, which i pinned and that's how i became aware of the existence of these new pages and besides that comment there has been basically no communication between batter and myself the filter replacement i got it via telescope service where i bought the uh, filter originally uh, but it feels to me like Battery is making a lot of effort in really like rectifying the issues that they've had with those high speed narrowband filters and you know the, the bad rep that they've had when people like me started measuring those filters. Uh, and I really hope, fingers crossed, that this really resolves the issue. Now, would I wholeheartedly recommend that you buy one of those better filters? My answer to that is, if you have a spectrometer or a way to measure the filter via spectrometer, uh, then yes, go for it, because then you can always return it if you have an issue. Um, if you do not have a spectrometer, maybe wait for a bit until you see more reviews from more people to make sure that their F2, F3, other focal ratios kind of split system have also uh, improved the, uh, the, the quality control on the filters themselves. Because as a reminder, the filter that I had uh, prior to this one was a terrible filter regardless of focal ratio. I mean, I would have needed like an f1.6 uh, telescope with like a central obstruction of 90% in diameter for that particular filter to have made sense, which obviously makes no sense whatsoever overall. Um, so yeah, something to keep in mind still. 
I'm very impressed by what they're doing. They, they've obviously spent a lot of time and effort uh, in doing so. They're actually, you know, following through, and that's always something great. That that means you know they're listening to their users, they're listening to the community, and that's really a great point in my book. Okay, so that's it for this video. If you learned something, if you liked it, leave a like, subscribe, blah, 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 all that good stuff. Okay, with that out of the way, I want to do a quick uh, channel update. So if you're not interested in that, feel free to just leave the video now. I uh, just want to say that I don't know when I'll be able to do more astrophotography with this beautiful weather there, but also with my back, which is uh, still in pain. They removed the uh, bolts and screws that I had in my spine after an accident I had, so... Uh, these things there and uh, eight of those little small tiny screws were removed from my spine uh, <laughs> and uh, it's, uh, it's still painful I still have trouble like lifting like objects that are uh, even sm slightly heavy so yeah that's gonna be put a damper on my activity for sure uh, but yeah I mean I'll, I'll see if uh, if I'm not able to put uh, videos up uh, regularly, I'll uh, I'll probably like completely close my Patreon page, for instance, so that I don't, you know, uh, abuse of your generosity. Uh, but yeah, that's that's pretty much it for a channel. I still uh, want to do astrophotography, but I'm not quite able to right now. Although I have my setup fully automated with my Hyper Hyperstar C6, so in theory, I should be able to use it without having to use my back muscles, which are not in great shape right now. Uh, we'll see. So um, yeah. Uh, We'll, we'll see how that goes. Uh, at any rate, thank you so much uh, for watching. I hope you learned uh, something. Um, I hope to make a new video soon, depending on, uh, on what I'm able to do. Uh, but don't forget, whenever you can, to look up at the stars. And I'll see you next time.